From the hot air balloon capital of the world, this is Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by ExxonMobil. Direct from the rooftop studio at Balloon Fiesta Park in Albuquerque, New Mexico, here are the hosts of Balloon Fiesta Live, Glenn Moyer and Art Lloyd Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good afternoon. Welcome back. It is day six of the 49th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta, and tonight our first special shapes Glodio is on hand. I'm Glenn Moyer. You're watching Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by ExxonMobil. And joining me, as always, my partner, Art Lloyd Jr. Looks like a great evening. Looks like it's going to be a great evening here, exactly. And it is, we've got a great crowd out here already, already too, for yeah. this. And traffic has been murder. Getting, getting in, in here, in. yeah. yeah I, it took me forever. Well, of course, Thursday and, and Friday. I'm, and I'm special, so. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thursday and Friday, no school, special shapes. It always brings a great crowd. It does, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it, it, you can tell it. If you're coming up Alameda, some of the other main routes in, the traffic was pretty tough this afternoon. So hopefully you got here early. Obviously, a lot of people did. And uh, I'm sure there are even more who are uh, working their way here to well, the park for tonight's show. Look along the road. Look at all the regular shape chase vehicles that are parked on the right hand or the left side of the road My over gosh. there. My gosh. To check out the special shapes yeah. glow here tonight. Outstanding. We had a great morning. Uh, our first Special Shapes Rodeo with a lot of the shapes flying and a number of others remaining on static display along the eastern side of the field there along Main Street, uh, the spectating area there when we open the field for competition today. Great flight this morning. Uh, another Chamber of Commerce day here in the land of enchantment. It is. And, you know, just about an hour ago, we actually got things started here at Balloon Fiesta Park with the drop-in of Fast Track yeah. Skydiving Team. I got in just after they had jumped and in time to see that 5,000 square feet of freedom uh, make its way down onto the balloon field. So the people who were here live got to see that live. Wait, are you saying I wasn't here live? Well, you were kind of here live. Okay. But there's a number of people who weren't, <laughs> and of course those who are watching us right all across now. the world, yes. online, on Facebook, YouTube, balloonfiesta.com, they didn't get a chance to see it then either because no. we didn't go live with it. Our show just started live at 6 o'clock. But we recorded it for you, and we're going to let you see that now. So for all of you on the field, when you hear me say, look up above, they're not there right now. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded this an hour ago. You will, hear, you will hear the national anthem. And if you're near the Main Street stage, you'll be able to see all this on the video wall as well. And we got some pretty incredible helmet cam video for you as well. So let's take a look at Fast Tracks from one hour ago. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Fast Tracks to get us started this afternoon. And they'll be bringing the American flag in with our national anthem shortly. If you will address your uh, eyes high above the sky or towards the video walls, you will see our team. They are less than one minute away from departing the aircraft. If you're near the video walls, we have our live helmet cam on, and they are uh, looking down on the field. We can see their view as well. So they're giving us a standby for the live jump, for the exit of the aircraft. We do have audio from our helmet cam as well. We'll see, we're gonna try that, see how that works for us today. We see you. And we have a jumper away. Number two is away. And our helmet cam is away. Four good canopies. They are at the south end of the field if you're still looking for them. Look high to the south end of the field. Hi. 
And a little maneuvering up there. Getting everybody in position. And there is 5,000 square feet of freedom. Larry Compton flying the flag down for us. Dimitri Dadik is flying our helmet cam. And Dimitri flying directly behind Larry as he crisscrosses back and forth behind the flag. bringing us some great pictures on our video feed. Check out the video wall on the field or go back and watch this show as we play it back on BalloonFiesta.com right here on Balloon Fiesta Live. This is the first of two jumps that Fast Tracks will do this afternoon for us. They'll be back at 7.30 tonight to kick off our Afterglow fireworks, and they'll be doing fireworks in the sky tonight. So we see the drop-down smoke on one jumper. As Dimitri keeps bringing us that fabulous shot, of the United States flag. The smoke and flag. The smoke and flag, he says. All the time flying the parachute, continuing to check out the LZ, the landing zone. And some pyrotechnics from our fourth jumper. A great shot of Balloon Fiesta Park below our jumpers with the flag as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to honor America by the playing of our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Fast Tracks. Announce to Team Fast Tracks. Great job. We'll see you at 7.30 for your pyrotechnics jump.
All right, so again, that was Team Fast Tracks and their jump at 5 o'clock. So if you looked up and didn't see them coming down, it's There's because it was why. an hour it, ago. Yeah. <laughs> I was interested. I'm looking in on our Facebook feed, and uh, the jumper that had that was carrying the American flag. Larry Compton. Yeah, well, his wife, Cheryl, is watching our feed. Oh, and right. We were all praising the job that her husband did and how magnificent that flag is. So Cheryl, He does a fabulous job bringing Cheryl that is, flag uh, in. So, Larry, wherever you are, I know you're on the field here somewhere now. Your wife, Cheryl, was watching and loving the video of your jump this afternoon. So if you're over there by the flag, you may notice that the yellow flag is up. Actually, they're changing it from red to yellow because there was a confusion over yeah. the color. But they're changing it to, level, uh, to um, yellow, and they really expect it to go green in about 15 minutes or so anyway. So a slight hold, but it's just going to make even for a better glow because it's going to get darker for it, us Exactly. To do that. You know, we, we hate to start too early because while the sun's still up, you really don't get the glow effect of the balloon. So ideally, we wait and go a little later. Monday night was perfect right. when we launched the America's Challenge gas balloon race and they were about 30 minutes late getting off which put us from starting at 6 or shortly after to starting a little after 6 30 and by then it was twilight and the light was perfect well sunset isn't until 6 43 tonight well, so there that's you go. still a good half an hour away and yeah. then of course you know there's a lot of light after that yes. so uh, yeah so a little a little bit of hold here um, also lets the sun get down and it gets just a little bit darker up here as well. Gets a little bit cooler as well. It's already, I can tell here in the shade on the rooftop, it's already a bit cooler than it was when I arrived about an hour ago. Yeah, but and it's still uh, a nice evening. Oh, I've got a, no, I'm not complaining. Shirt I, I'm sleeves. Just, and, yeah, it's yeah. gorgeous out. In fact, uh, checking the uh, weather station right here on the rooftop studio, it's currently 78.8 degrees. Wow, it doesn't feel like that. Middle of October, 78.8 yeah, yeah. degrees. Yeah, this and we've got some winds out of the south at uh, 4, 5, a little bit of gust on there, but every, every forecast, everything is expected to calm down. We're just going to give it a couple minutes. Yeah, this has been a very temperate year. Uh, temperature wise very you know very. because most mornings in a lot of places been up here with just basically our fleeces on uh, you know lightweight covering um, where I can recall years when our teeth were chattering uh, so it's been a very calm uh, mild year and uh, I vote for that you know <laughs> all the time well I'll see what we can do about well, that well thank you speak to those in charge and see what you can arrange hey. I mean you are the executive producer I'll uh, I'll work on that <laughs> okay you want to introduce our uh, special guest up here? Yeah, we are, we are joined on the tower, on the rooftop studio, I should say, by a very dear friend. We've worked very closely together for the past six years, uh, a gentleman named Tim Cloyd, who has just recently, this week, uh, stepped down from a position as one of the directors of the Balloon Federation of America. Tim served on the board uh, two three-year terms, consecutive terms, did a wonderful job. The only person, I think, probably in the history of the organization who became secretary the day that he was elected and kept that job for six years doing a magnificent job at it. Most of the time, that that's that thankless task that right. goes to the newbie who yeah. comes on the board. And the um, first chance you get, you pass it on to someone else? the first chance you get to pass it on. Tim was the only person who said, ah, I'll keep doing it. And he kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. it like the Energizer Bunny, he just kept going and going and going. Anyway, great job, uh, Tim, for that. He is also, as I say, he just stepped down. His six-year term came to an end. But he is still the chairman of our upcoming National Convention for the Balloon Federation of America, which will be in Topeka, Kansas. I'll let him tell you the date so I don't mess it up. So please <laughs> welcome to the rooftop studio my good friend, Mr. Tim Cloyd. Good well, evening, Tim. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Art, for being here. So yeah. the BFA National Convention, tell us a little bit about it, and more importantly, tell us the dates. Well, it's in Topeka, Kansas. The dates are April 7th through the 9th of next year next year and registration is already open now registration is open you can go to bfa.net and you can register for that now do you have to be a bfa member uh, in advance to attend the convention or can not anyone who loves balloons show up oh anybody who loves balloons you do not have to be a member of the bfa okay anybody who wants to be a balloon uh, learn about balloons so what takes place at a national convention well we have magnificent speakers we, we hear a lot of uh we're some of the best speakers in the world that come here. So a lot of uh, information that will be passed on. We have trade shows, some of the vendors that are in the industry leaders as well, receptions, banquets. Uh, it's a full load of three days. Yeah, great networking opportunity and a certainly amount of, certain amount of socializing, which we've missed for a couple of years now thanks to COVID. In fact, we actually had to delay or postpone the convention a year 
because of COVID constraints. Yes, conventions are usually every three years. Right. Well, this is going to be four years. Okay. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, it's where you can, as you said, rub arms with some of the leaders of the industry, some of the most famous names you can come across. Well, tell me a little bit about the behind the scenes work. I mean, I know you have a committee you're working with, and you guys ha have to organize um, hotel accommodation for those that are coming to the convention. You have to arrange meeting rooms for all of these different sessions to go on. You have to find these excellent speakers you're talking about and a guest speaker. Um, how long have you been involved in this process? Well, we started May of 2018. So ex we have another good year to really work on it, but uh, we're ahead of the game. Was it difficult when we had to postpone? I mean, a lot of times a hotel would say, well, you know, that's it. You had a, a contract for this year, sorry and you have to almost start over from scratch. So have all the people, uh, the logistics that you've been working with behind the scenes, have all those people been cooperative in moving forward a year? Very much so. We're very fortunate that everything carried forward. Yes, it was a very difficult decision when that came to be, to make that decision like right. any event, but we knew it was the best choice to make. We could postpone it for one year and everything's pretty much in place. So Topeka, Kansas is not a place that I would think a lot of people are um, intimate with, uh, it, we no have knowledge of, you know, what's in the area to see and do. So when you're not at the convention, what are some of the other th attractions in the area that people will enjoy while they're attending? Well, one is the uh, uh, Evil Knievel Museum, which is interesting. Uh, oh, itself. I didn't yes, know that was uh -huh. there. Yeah, yeah there's uh, casinos nearby as well. And one interesting fact, ballooning-wise, in K Topeka, they go back to the early 70s. So they have a long, rich history of ballooning in Topeka. I, wasn't there a, a, am I remembering correctly, there was a balloon rally there, or maybe there still is? There still is, yes, yeah. the Huff and Puff. Huff it's, and Puff, yes, yes, yes. It's going on um, nearly 40 years, I think. Wow. Um, yes, and you know, there's, I have an aviation history in, in Kansas itself. Sure. Uh, many uh, aircraft were, were built there. Outstanding, well, uh, best of luck as we move forward. And um, I'll be in Topeka, of course, <laughs> so I'll see you there. And hopefully we'll see a lot of you there. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Cloyd, chairman of the National Convention, coming up for the Balloon Federation of America. If you'd like to know more, simply log on to www.bfa.net. And again, anyone is welcome, so check out the convention information. Registration is now open. Thank Thanks, you very Tim. much, Glenn. Art, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for coming up this evening. And of course, with BFA, as you said, just as you don't have to be a balloonist to go to the convention, you don't have to be a balloonist to join BFA.net. That's true. If you have an interest in balloons, that would be the perfect way to expand that interest, learn more about it, and just kind of get involved and see what happens. And if you want to, you know, if you want to dangle your toes in the water, there's ways to do that with regional clubs all around the country. Um, and BFA membership, you can join online. The memberships are $35 a year for an e-membership, which gets you all the member benefits, plus the right to read our uh, bi-monthly magazine uh, online, or for a full $55 membership, you, can, uh, you then also receive the printed magazine that comes out every two months. So 35 bucks or 55 bucks to be a member of the BFA. So you pay the extra for the printing and postage. You pay the extra for the printing and postage of the magazine, exactly. So, but, but you know, if you have the electronic version, that's really easy just to kind of watch it right on your device or look at it. And it really is. And one of the things I'm trying to explore, and I hate to say this publicly, especially with our treasurer here standing beside me, <laughs> but uh, one of the things I want to explore is how we maybe can embed video into that online magazine so that you would be able to read a story that might be in the magazine, but online there might be a little embedded video that would have more details or a little more excitement. So maybe something for the future we'll be looking toward. This is our Special Shapes Glodio here tonight at the Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. And our Kim Vesley is down on the field and she has found one of our Special Shape pilots to chat with. Kim? <laughs> yeah, an old buddy of yours. Uh, so it's we're uh, here. There's a lot of people getting ready. The crew is hard at work on this, and the uh, pilot I stole, so we could talk to her. Hi, Trudy. Hi, Kim. How are you today? Fine. Why don't you introduce yourself? Say where you're from. Okay, I'm Trudy DeGraff. I'm the pilot of Cutie Dink, originally from upstate New York, and now I live here in Corrales, New Mexico. And talk about Cutie Dink a little bit. It's a really familiar balloon at Fiesta. I had Cutie Dink first Fiesta in 1998. I've been here at almost every Fiesta since. 
It's a small shape, but the kids really love being the small cat. They can identify with it fairly well. Everybody loves kitty cats. At least, at least I love kitty cats. Meow. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> what, what made you? What made you get a? What made you get a shape? I started crewing for the dog team from Japan. They had the Labrador Retrievers. It was the mom with the two puppies hanging on her back, and then dad was just the dog's head. And the last year I crewed with them, one of the gifts for thank you they gave me was a Japanese happy cat. I looked at it and said, that's my balloon. <laughs> and that is one happy cat. Have you had any great experiences with this, with kids or anything like that? Oh yeah, I have great experiences with the kids all the time. I try to get them in the basket as much as possible. And if we can't actually put the balloon up, I'll let them play with the burner if we're only doing a candlestick and it's not real windy. Um, you know, they'll get the chance to fire the burner up. I let the kids work with it. My youngest crew member was 10 months old when she started. Well, I'm going to let you go because your crew's doing all the work, and they're going to get mad at me if I make them do all the work. But uh, And also, the green flag is up, so you need to get ready. You okay. have, a, have a wonderful evening, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Trudy. And uh, people are here, shapes are here, and we're going to have a good time tonight. Thank you, Kim, and uh, thanks, Trudy. And for those who are not familiar with Cutie Dink, it's the red cat balloon because we have multiple kitty cat balloons many, here. Many, many of them. Yeah, yes. it's, it's the red one with the, the one eye that's winking at you. And uh, excellent choice for interviews, Kim, because, you know, I'm a cat fancier. And last year, one of my two, Ranger, became a guest star on Balloon Fiesta Siesta. Uh, Ranger is at home, unfortunately. and uh, But my cat sitter sends me pictures Every day, let me know that he's doing okay. Bonnie hides. You'll never see Bonnie, but Ranger loves attention, so he's been out playing. And actually, Trudy set Cutie Dink up at the park near my house a number of years ago. Yeah. And we took our cat down there, Sunny, and Sunny? put Sunny oh, yeah. in the balloon. Oh, my goodness. And just, uh, she loved it. As long yeah. as she was with people, she would put up with anything. So she's actually had a little tether ride in Cutie Dink. Uh, well, before she passed on. You know, for years I brought uh, Bailey, my other cat, out here for so many years until she passed on a few years ago. But I would never have tried to put her near a balloon because I would have lost an arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sunny was great. Hey, you know, this morning we had competition. We did. And we had our special shapes, Glodio, our rodeo, they stood up. And then we had competition, and we were down in the middle of the competition field this yes, morning. Yes, you were. And you may remember that I said we need to watch Zarek Wells in the yellow racer with the handlebar black mustache on it. Right. We need to watch him because he's got a great line on the pole. And then I said, I probably just jinxed him. And you did. And he got to the pole. He should have been able to set it down on the pole. And it bounced off the end, and he missed. Oh. So, um, sure enough, so, apparently I jinxed him. So that's why. So, yes, when we got <laughs> back here this afternoon, our on-the-rooftop studio here is littered, covered in Guilty trading cards. And you are guilty. Not You're not a little guilty. I'm you're not a, a lot no, guilty. No, I'm a lot of guilty. We got them <laughs> yeah. everywhere. They we were on them. our headsets. They, they were was, on the chairs. They're stuck in our mic control boxes here. We've got them, as you can see. Yeah, look. Yeah, yeah just some of the see? ones that we have here. Yeah. So, yeah. So, thanks, Zarek, and your yeah. uh, guilty crew. Now, bringing up the idea of trading cards, all of our balloon pilots have them. And since many of our special shapes are only here today and tomorrow, right. they're going to have lots for you to collect. And tonight is the night to go basket to basket to basket and collect those cards if you're interested in that. And if you can find our Balloon Fiesta well, Live team. When Kim was down around the field, we have Balloon Fiesta Live cards that have our two uh, Mimojis, Mimojis on there. On them. Yeah. yeah. So, guilty. Balloon Fiesta Live. Yeah, guilty and guilty, the guy in the red, not the one in the blue, <laughs> just the guy in the red. <laughs> so collect all the cards tonight. Have a great time with that. Absolutely. And it is going to be a great evening. As you heard Kim say, the uh, green flag has gone up, so we are all set to go for tonight's show. We're just going to wait out the sunset a little bit. We're nearing that magic hour. Hasn't happened yet, but if you look over your shoulders, people from Albuquerque know this, but if you're from out of town, there comes a moment, and it's just a moment when the sun sets at just the right angle, and it hits the Sandia Mountains behind us. And Sandia is the Native American word for watermelon. 
and those mountains take on this pink glow that looks very much like, like a, a watermelon, watermelon fruit. Where, that's, that's where they get their name. But it's a mag it, some of you maybe have heard about the green flash you sometimes see at sunset over the sea. This is our version of that, when those mountains turn a beautiful pink. Um, and it's just for an instant, so you don't want to miss it. And that's, that'll be coming up as we get just a little later uh, in the evening, a little closer to twilight tonight. I think we'll have it. I actually see some color changing going on over there yeah, now. Yeah. It, it's a few minutes away. We'll try and keep an eye on it and point yeah. you in that direction as it happens. But yes, we are uh, already uh, going to have, we're going to have a great night tonight. All the wins, all the predictions for low, low winds, they're all coming true. We actually already see balloons starting to inflate. I think that's, is that Tammy Shrum with Tiamo down there? That's the red balloon? That's what I'm thinking it is. It's already inflating, Yeah, I think. we can kind of see the big white eyeball. And I think maybe uh, yellow bird. Um, Looks like that's yellow bird. Down at the northeast corner. Yep, in fact, look, it's just got a little more air in it. We yeah. can see the eyes now. Yep. And then the black and white one next to it would be Putty Cat. Putty Cat, yeah. Well, speaking of cat balloons, had an interesting conversation. Uh, you know, we got into a discussion this morning about this where some of these shapes, you will recognize them as well-known cartoon characters. Yep. Uh, but for a variety like Yellowbird, uh, we all know who it is. But for a variety of reasons, they don't use the, the, the copyright. It's an anti-copyrighted thing. Don't want to go there, but had an interesting it conversation with licensing. Uh, licensing, rights, yeah. Rights, to yeah. use the name, to you got to pay the fees. Exactly. So had an interesting conversation with Malcolm White um, over in Ireland. Oh yeah. After the flight this morning, because they were due to be here, um, flying uh, what what he called the porcupine, and, okay. and and we all know it as a hedgehog, and it's one of those with those with a, a licensed name. And so we uh -huh. had an interesting discussion about licensing, and and he was he was in kind of interested in, in all of the different, what he called anti-copyright names that have been given to some of these balloons, like Rocket the Squirrel and Mr. Winkle and, and Yellow Bird, et cetera. So just a little sidebar there, as I say, a great discussion uh, this morning after flying uh, with Malcolm White, who he and um, his lovely partner, Pauline Baker, wanted to be here this year, but because of the international um, travel restrictions, they're not able to be here, but they are booked in for next year, so hopefully we'll see them then. And I see a cream, that looks like the regular shape. I think that's the Moo Crew, the round yeah. balloon. Hey, uh, we all, obviously today, this morning was Kids Day. Right. And uh, But we have a lot of kids back out again tonight because the shapes are always fun for them. And I think Kim Vesley has found a young man to do an interview with down on the field. Kim, take it away. <laughs> I have found a young man and an old friend of ours. You may recognize this young man, actually. Why don't you tell us who he, who, tell us who you are? Hi, my name is Peyton Cusick. Peyton, good to see and you again. And how old are you? I, I am actually eight years old. And Art says, good to see you again, because he remembers you. Uh, you. You walked up to me, and what did you ask me? It, if Miss Ruth was here, <laughs> well, Miss Ruth, of course, does the mornings, <laughs> so uh, I will pass along to Miss Ruth that you were here. So, when were you here last time? Um, we, I was here three years ago. And why did you and your family come back? Because we really just wanted. It was pretty fun from an angle. And did you go see the special shapes last time? Yes, we did. And do you have a favorite one? Probably, if I had to choose one, Lindy. <laughs> you like Lindy, okay. huh? Oh. So, uh, and uh, the guys on the truck are sitting here nodding along, the guys up in the rooftop studio. They remember you from last time, and they said hello. Well, I'm going to let you and your family go because we're starting to inflate balloons out here, and I don't want you to miss a minute, okay? Okay. So glad you came back. So we're going to go look at some special shapes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Peyton. Bye, Peyton. Thank you. Good yeah, to have Peyton. you back. Yeah, good to, yeah. make sure yeah. that you give him one of the Balloon Fiesta Live pits, Kim. Scoring <laughs> some uh, manufacturer points when he mentioned that Lindy was his favorite shape. Well, too. there you go. Yeah. yeah. So we're seeing a lot of our special shapes 
get cold inflated at this point. Looks like Augie the, uh, Augie the Friendly Dragon there. And we were looking inside Tiamo with uh, yeah. Tammy and Mike. Up here on our end, uh, Striker, the soccer ball is inflating. Uh, I see Peg Leg Pete, uh, Dave and Kathy Reinecke. Um, Dave, by the way, another of those. There were a bunch of uh, folks who received the uh, BFA's Ed Yost Master Pilot Award last Sunday uh, for 40 years of safe flying, and uh, Dave was one of those. And his wife, Kathy, he said, would be up here, up there getting hers, I think, either next year or the year after. She's a year or two uh, in, in flying experience behind Dave. And um, there is what I would have said until you told me this morning, great expectations. Yes. But is now, you, you tell me, they, now they just refer it to the stork. The stork. That's what everybody calls it everybody anyway. Calls it. Everybody no, I, calls I, I it. Agree. So might, yeah, so yeah. you might as well just go with it. But, I mean, for years I knew it as, you know, the first version, and this is the second. The rebuild, great expectations. There There's, is yep. one of the uh, two unicorn balloons that we have here. This is the white one, it would appear, and that is, give me just a half a second to get back in. While you're looking up, looking oh, that yeah, up, right this ahead. is a good opportunity to point out that the top of this balloon on this special shape is just like the regular shapes. We've talked about how they're all built on a regular shape basis with a lot of extra rigging to get the extra pieces, but now you can really see the roundness there. And There's the, the parachute top, yeah. Parachute top that you would see in any regular shape balloon. That is Tom Warren, by the way, who is the pilot from Florida of that new uh, white unicorn. And so I, I don't know the name, and I don't think they got into our spotting chart this year. Uh, so I'll have to find out the name of the balloon. But Tom is a brand new member. We talked about Tim Floyd just stepping down after two terms on the BFA Board of Directors. Tom from Florida has just been elected to the board, and so he just uh, joined us, took his seat on the board at our annual meeting on uh, Thursday prior to the start of Fiesta last week. What a great crowd we have out here tonight, and I would encourage all of you that are standing along Concession Row to move out into the field, get out in among the balloons. That's really, in my opinion, the best place to experience balloon glow is right from the middle of the field, right in the middle about all of those balloons. You'll really get the light, the power, the heat. You'll really experience it greatly that way. And you'll be a little more social distanced if you move out into the middle of the field. You will. And that's uh, one of the really magical things about this event is we have always allowed the spectators to get up close and personal with the balloons on the inflation field at many events you may attend around the country, certainly at air shows where there's powered aircraft involved. You're kept behind a fence or a crowd line and told don't go any closer than this. Uh, yeah. At Balloon Fiesta, you can get right out up and amongst all the activity uh, that you like. We Obviously, we want you to be careful. And if you're on the field tonight, as you walk around, be aware that these balloons will be tied down to the ground. There will be ropes running from the basket primarily to their chase vehicles, a tie-off line, we call it. Um, and so we always encourage you, don't walk between the balloons and the uh, vehicles walk around because as it gets darker, uh, those ropes, for example, might be hooked to, say, a trailer hitch at bumper level and then go up to the basket. And so even a very small person walking under uh, or walking through between the balloon and its uh, uh, tie-off truck um, could perhaps get caught on that uh, tie-off line, and we wouldn't want that. So be aware that those ropes are out there. And again, walk around the balloons and vehicles, not uh, between the baskets and the trucks. That's for your own safety. We should also mention, you talked about socially distancing. Um, Balloon Fiesta is um, working in accordance with the state mandate on masks. If you go indoors while you're here at Balloon Fiesta, and that includes inside a tent, uh, for example, or inside the uh, Sid Cutter Pavilion, or one of the tents to get food and then go back outside and eat. Whenever you're indoors, uh, we are required, you are required to mask up. Out on the balloon launch field, if you're in a big crowd of people, we encourage that you mask up or, as Art was suggesting, move further across the field where you can get some more distance between you and uh, the other 10,000 of your closest friends and neighbors who are going to be here tonight. Um, so on the field, it's your option, uh, your personal option, but we do recommend if you're in a crowd, uh, a large crowd of people, that you mask up for your safety as well as for theirs. There's the looking at the top end of the stork. Yep. The wings, kind of the black and the white at the top, and we see the blue hat of the stork on the lower left there. Just beside him there is Humpty Dumpty. Rich Lawhorn is the uh, owner and pilot of the balloon now. It was originally owned by my good friends Brian and Susan Owen. Had a chat with them today 
on Facebook Messenger, and Humpty Dumpty is now 25 years old. Wow. Yeah, hard to believe that. You know, one of the balloons we saw this morning and talked about this morning was Fred B. Rabbit. Yes. And we talked about how old Fred is. Yes, Fred goes way back. Well, I, I heard from Keith Spruill, who okay. is now the owner of Fred B. Rabbit. Right. And he tells me that the original Fred B. Rabbit was actually made in 1990. Okay, that and it was owned, right. Yep, and it was owned by Rusty Elwell. From Rusty Amber Elwell. <laughs> Elwell, yep. I was trying to recall Rusty's name from memory this morning because we were very good friends back in the day, um, and I couldn't do it. So I'm glad Keith filled us in on that. Yeah, and so um, Keith bought the balloon from Rusty in 2005. Not too long after that, the original Fred wore out. Okay. And so this is a rebuild. It was ah. rebuilt in 2017. And they took great pains to make this look as much like the original as possible. And, of course, they did a great job because we thought it was we the original. Was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Rusty passed away from cancer, as I recall, um, some years ago. One of the fun things that I remember Rusty did one time, you know, when rabbits, I know this is a family show, so when rabbits poop, they're, they're little round balls. Right. And, and so pellets so Re rusty one time had some fun he got some black pie balls oh no <laughs> and as he was flying along they were dropping these little helium filled you know probably guess, regular air, air, air field. Field. yeah, yeah, yeah. so they, they would fall yeah. these little airfield black toy. <laughs> so the rabbit was flying along and, and pooping pellets on the crowd <laughs> kind of fun <laughs> rusty was a fun loving guy we miss him there's cork our brand new puppy yeah from Brazil with Luis Assis. And also uh, supposed to be here. I hope they made it into town, and we'll see it tonight. will be Monty the Black Sheep. We um, expected Monty this morning, but we, we never saw I thought we would see it this him. morning, yeah, yeah. So I hope they've made it to town safely. And we'll see what, uh, who stands up here tonight. There, beside the unicorn, um, uh, all the horned animals apparently will be together because there it was just a quick look at uh, Mr. Z, or Mr. Zed. We're getting a little bit of pink on the mountain. Yeah, not, well, we are. it's not brilliant tonight like it is many well, nights. Well, the, the clouds have moved up over the mountain a little bit. You can see a little lenticular cloud there right on the top of that bank of clouds, meaning there's some uh, fast winds up above that, that kind of push and round off the tops of those clouds. And we have some interfering over on the west side that the cloud the sun is dropping oh, behind sure those do, two. Yeah. So we might not we might not see the, the magical yeah, that's pink about moment. as pink as I think we're gonna see. Yeah, that's a shame. This is an interesting balloon we're looking at here, this yellow one, which is the model T balloon. I'm anxious to truly see it stand oh, I up. Seen it, that one. I, yeah, I haven't either. I've seen a picture of it, so I'm looking forward to it standing up. And the red balloon with the white bottom right to the right that's of it. That's cutie dink. That's cutie dink yeah. that we were talking about. I meant about. to point her out earlier that we were talking about when we had uh, Trudy on the interview. Uh, Pegleg Pete is standing up, and there's the three-faced clown that is uh, you see on the monitor now. Uh, there's the stork, stork, or great expectations. Uh, the formerly stork, known as. Formerly known as, yeah. The, the balloon formerly known as great expectations. There you go. Uh, right beside Pegleg Pete is uh, Flip Flop Fantasy. Say that five times fast. Flip Flop Fantasy. Flip Flop Fantasy. Flip Flop Fantasy. Flip Flop Fantasy. Flip -flop fantasy. Yeah, flip -flop okay. Fantasy. Never mind. Uh, that's Terry Dillard uh, out of Florida, who is uh, that balloon. A lot of balloons, you know, get passed along. People build one, fly it for a while, sell it, go out and get something different. And uh, that one, of course, was one of uh, Diane Carlson's uh, balloons originally. Diane with Plano Pin Company, which, of course, is a good time to remind you. One of the great things to do while you're here at Balloon Fiesta, if you're into collecting pins, is to get those special shape pins. Uh, this year, Diane Carlson at Plano Pin Company has created all of the pins for us and they are the exclusive vendor of the official special shape pins. There are 89 pins in the, shape, in the uh, set. Some of them were already sold out when we checked with them this morning. And some of them are our balloons that actually didn't make it here. Uh, that's right, because, some, uh, because of travel restrictions. We actually have, I think, 84 on the field, perhaps. Uh, but there are 89 pins, those that are still available anyway. And uh, the way that you know you've got the official special shape pins, because there are other pin vendors here on site, and, and I'm not dissing them in any way, but Plano Pin is the only um, 
place to get the official the only ones. officially licensed vendor and their, their well, pins. Well, they have the official, the official Balloon Fiesta pins. Right. And we talked about this morning, they have the stamp have, on the back say, of the I was going to say, the way you know is look on the back of the pin, and if it's the official pin, it will have the Fiesta stamp and the date uh, on the back side of the pin. So if you want the official special shape pins, uh, the place to be is Plano Pen Company, and their booth is, I believe, almost adjacent to the uh, merchandise tent where you can get all the other official Fiesta merchandise on the north end of the field. And if you're not good with directions here like I am, north is uh, the end down toward the berm, not the end where corporate village is. We're down on the south end broadcasting Balloon Fiesta Live powered by ExxonMobil. So Plano Pen will be down on the other end of the field from us. The mountains are to the east. Mountains are to the east. Is the how sun we is tell setting folks. to the west. Yeah. There you go. We're on the south, on the rooftop studio. There is, uh, speaking up of... up is where it's blue and down is, is where, where it's green. green. Yeah, sort more or less. <laughs> so uh, speaking of green, there is the uh, uh, preventive uh, pest control. And uh, that's Itsy Bitsy is the name of the balloon because it has that not so itsy bitsy two spiders climbing down the balloon. On the screen we have our fish balloon. Is that what that is? That's a I've fish. I've seen it a couple of times and I've wondered because we also have um, sushi is here, which is a, a fish special shape. Gusty Guppy uh, is also here, which is another fish shape. We talked about how many cat shapes we have. So we also have several fish shapes. We have several um, uh, we usually have a couple of different elephant shapes. We have several pig shapes, I know. Uh, the Ant. elephants were one of those that had travel issues. Yeah, because they're uh, foreign balloons. They're international Canadian balloons. Canadian and um, uh, Belgian. Belgium. Yep. yep. Uh, but our pig balloons are here. We see. Uh, I can see Doug Gant in Hamlet or When Pigs Fly, and then there's the other one that we never could figure out the name of this morning. Just inflating by the fish. If you're looking at the monitors on the big video wall, we could see that one. We could just call him Piggy. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of Piggly Wiggly or one it of the three does, pigs. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And EO was standing, I, uh, not quite standing up, but that was the blue one in the middle there. There's the white unicorn. Yep. That crew's going to have to do an awful lot. We might have one of the elephants. Is that the, uh, pink, the gray one in the back with the pink ears? That is, uh, oh, that is, uh, oh, come yeah. on, brain. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's, that's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have to catch it from the other side. Oh, yeah. Let me. Is he in our list? Let me get back and look and see because I, that's one of those. Or is that? Um, one of my embarrassing moments. That's Max. Um, or is that Tomcat? No, I don't think. No, I think that's. Well, there's the Red Devil while we figure out who that other one is. There he is. There he is. There he is. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, that is Max Mitchell. Of course it is. And Alphonse. That's the gray balloon with the pink ears. Okay. Yeah, so we do have one of the elephants here. Yeah. Yeah. Barry Ballinger with the uh, Plains Capital Bank is here along the south end. Uh, that's the balloon with the two tataka, or bison, or buffalo on either side of the balloon. Standing up right next to him, the soccer ball striker. striker. Now, what is and this purple and orange thing that's inflating here in front of ooh, us? Ooh, I know. You know? I know. Okay. It's one that has not been here for a number of years. Oh. And if I tell you that... It is one of those that has a different name because of those licensing, licensing issues. Yeah. I will tell you that it's Speedbird. Oh. <laughs> the light bulb goes on oh. over the top of Glenn Moyer's head. <laughs> yes. You don't need the stage lights no more. No more. Turn the stage lights out. <laughs> we don't need no stinking lights. Okay, well, I'll be excited to see that stand up there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to give we away the surprise. We had a really nice picture of that balloon in the calendar a few years ago. Yeah. I've used it in a number of presentations that I've built for Balloon Fiesta that we give in different organization types of things. There's um, Yoda and, and Darth, Darth Vader getting inflated. But speaking now, of the calendar, while I have the opportunity. Go right ahead. Speak about it. So we have the 2022 calendar already for sale for you, already put together, available in those same merchandise tents that you were talking about. And it is the 2022 calendar with a lot of great pictures, big pictures above each month. And what's really special is the fact that there is 50 minutes. That's 5-0 minutes worth of video embedded in the calendar. We actually had somebody write us in one time and said, I, 
can't find the DVD to get the video. Oh. And we had to explain <laughs> to her that the video is embedded. Yeah. You just download the uh, little PixAction app on your mobile device and point it at the calendar, and it will recognize whatever picture you're pointing at, and it will play a three to four minute video for you that has something to do with that. If it's a, a glow shape or a special shape glow, you'll get that kind of video playing right there on your phone. 50 minutes of video included in our 2022 calendar, available here on the field in the merchandise tents. You're gonna wanna grab yours up because it is the 50th anniversary calendar. This being year number 49 and our 49th event. Next year, our 50th event and our 50th anniversary. So do pick up a calendar. They also make great Christmas gifts. On the screen a moment ago, uh, for quite some minutes there, we had the uh, the Red Devil, and uh, not to belabor the point, some folks in our chat room on our Facebook feed asking, uh, can you explain the accident that they were involved with earlier uh, this week? Uh, on Sunday morning, I think it was, they grazed a power line as they were coming in for a landing. Um, the uh, Everybody in the balloon was safe. Uh, the balloon, the power line actually arced a little bit behind them, so it looked rather spectacular, but it was really a very nominal accident. They simply grazed the power line with one of the skids. Uh, everyone in the balloon was fine. The balloon is fine. There was no significant damage. It has been reinspected, certified as airworthy, and so uh, all's well that ends well. It did look scary, but um, it was not. And so um, I shouldn't say it wasn't, but uh, the point is everyone's fine. The balloon's fine, and we're glad to have it back here with us. And it is airworthy and certified to fly. And so good to have them here. There's, uh, we're talking about fish balloons right beside uh, the Red Devil. That is the backside of Gus T. Guppy. And there is, um, that's Sushi. That's the Sushi there. Huh? Here, yeah. Mr. Z behind Sushi. And there's the koala bear we were talking about earlier this morning. This is not the one I'm familiar with uh, from uh, Sky Safari and Longleat. Bingo. Um, but you're telling me that was, this is a local balloon, you think? Um, I, it, yes. I, I believe it still is. It, okay. was, it was two years ago. Um, I, don't, we, I don't see every balloon that flies, and not everyone well, flies sure. all these balloons every day or every weekend. Yeah. And even though we can fly like 300 days out of the year here in Albuquerque, not everyone puts all those up. But that, is, uh, that was a, a new one here in Albuquerque a couple of years ago, and I believe it's still uh, based here. Ah, our audience, ducky. our audience always come through. The pig you don't know the name to is Farmer Pig. Farmer Pig, that's right. Farmer I do pig. remember that now. Thank you, Simon, for cluing us in there. We always turn to our audience when we don't know. Someone out there watching usually does. Eduardo's already doing all burns in the uh, chat room. Yeah, on. yeah, I saw that. You know, <laughs> Eduardo, that's that's nice, but you know that that fad's kind of come and gone. People jumped all over that the other night. Well, we could do it again tonight, no, it's, it's but fun. not until we start. No, no, I know it, it's fun. Yeah. When we, we we did one of our first glows this week, um, Eduardo was I thought really clever because instead of commenting, ooh ah, how pretty is that? He just lit up his phone with you know the flame emojis for all burns and twinkle burns, and suddenly everybody did it. If you're looking in our chat rooms, uh, all the comments were flame emojis. And then we had, uh, I think it was uh, Kim, or maybe it was Ruth, one of our two reporters did an interview in the red, white, and blue section of that glow, the patriotic section, and everybody blew up their phones with American flag emojis, so lots of fun. But um, yeah, but we haven't done a, 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 you know, we haven't glowed yet, we haven't. Nope. Glow, we is it glowed yet. or glown? <laughs> we haven't lit up yet. We haven't. And is it lit or lighted? So, yeah. Anyway. There is uh, the rubber duck. And uh, that, we talked about Humpty Dumpty originally being owned by uh, Brian and Susan Owen. That was also uh, one of their balloons originally. It, uh, as I recall, Humpty Dumpty was first, and they sold it on to Rich Lawhorn, and then they followed it with uh, the rubber duck. And if you look around the bottom of the rubber duck, there's all kind. Of, you see, he's sitting in his pond, and you can see the frogs and little goldfish, and there's even, I think, a beer can down uh, on the on the uh, uh, what do they what do they call water? And then there's the ground. What do you call the ground? The I mean, beach, the shore. No, the shore the is where, where the water ends. <laughs> the, the pond floor, or so, I don't know, sea floor, whatever. Okay. I can't think of the right word. Face plant there by Yoda. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can, there's a number of them that are almost ready to go hot out there. So yeah, we'll, we'll give them we'll a give chance a few to do more that. minutes to get the last uh, bunch of the balloons inflated and stood up, and then we'll get started. There's I the backside of uh, Buddy Beaver. 
who was originally Mr. Potato Head. In fact, one of the fun things to do if you're down in that area, watch when he glows. You, you can still see the Mr. Potato Head original face behind the cheeks and jowls of what is now Buddy Beaver. The fabric is transparent enough or, um, that you, you can actually see how they did a, uh, an extreme makeover and turned Mr. Potato Head. But when he glows, it's fun because you could, at least the last time I saw it glow, you could still see uh, the Mr. Potato Head face behind uh, the cheeks and jowls of uh, Buddy Beaver. There's um, Billy the Kid in the lower right corner of the screen. Yep. There's one of our other cat balloons, I think is what that is, standing up down there. That's the, gray. the raccoon. And I can, I can see the uh, Sunny Boy uh, balloon still cold inflating. We showed you Darth and uh, Yoda. Yoda a little earlier, and they are here with their very own special crew. The uh, I'll let Kim tell you the official name. Uh, but Kim has found uh, probably some stormtroopers, I think, down there to interview. Kim. <laughs> we have stormtroopers, we have Jedi, and we have all manner of other uh, various and sundry aliens and good guys and bad guys. And we have with us a good guy who is a bad guy, right? Yeah, good. <laughs> bad guy's doing good. And you are? I'm Ty O'Dell. I'm the CEO of the Dewback Ridge of the 501st here in New Mexico. Okay. And is there just one stormtrooper uh, group in New Mexico, or do you have several? There's one garrison for the 501st here in New Mexico, yes. Garrison. I, obviously, I am not up on my terminology right. here. We, we're worldwide, so here in New Mexico, we're at the Dewback Ridge. And uh, have you, you've probably done Fiesta before, right? We've done Fiesta for 14 years. Wow, wow. How did you get involved in this in the first place? Uh, Benoit invited us. He's the pilot of, of Vader, and this was way before Yoda. Mm -hmm. So he invited us, and we showed up. What is the weirdest thing that has ever happened to you being a stormtrooper at Balloon Fiesta? Personally, the weirdest thing is I was punched in 2019 when we were going out of here. Punched? Yeah, yeah, a lady punched me right in the face. I don't know why she just called <laughs> off and punched me. It was pretty weird. Clearly, she's didn't, with the rebellion. Like Stormtroopers, I guess, I guess. I guess not. I guess she does. She's not a Star Wars fan. I guess. Yeah. Or or, or a member of the rebellion, as as that the shower points too, yeah. out. Yeah, that could be it too. Are you glad to be back? Of course. This is wonderful. And uh, and uh, did you really miss not having the the balloons here last year and uh, Vader and Yoda and all that? Absolutely, we miss we miss Fiesta. This is one of our premier events of the year. What do you guys do when you're not being stormtroopers at Fiesta? Uh, I'm a remodeler. I, I do PI work. I do three or four different jobs, so I'm busy all the time. Uh, does, does the club meet and all of that? How can people get involved? We, we do have we do have get-togethers that are not in costume. Uh, we've kind of held off because of COVID to restrict numbers and whatnot, but we're starting to get back into it. Um, to get involved, just go to 501st.com. There, there's a, a link to find your your local garrison. Just jump jump in there, and you know we're all willing and ready to get you involved. Well, we're really glad to have you back, and we're really glad to be back, and we're glad to have Benoit back. It's just, it's all good. Yes, it is. I'll let you get back to work. we got a lot of people around here yes. checking out Yoda and Darth. Yes, thank you. And back to you, fellas. Thanks, Kim. And, um, you know, just be glad the lady that uh, punched him didn't have a lightsaber. There you go. She wasn't a Jedi. Hey, yeah. Glenn, I think it's time to get this thing started. I think so. We still have a number of balloons that are cold inflating. Uh, some a little bit of wind on the field. It looks like some of the balloons are acting to it. But we have enough standing up. Let's do our first all burn of the evening to get this thing kicked off. So we need everyone to help us count down. Even though we've got an improved PA system this year and the pilots can hear us, it always works better when you count down with us. So Here let's we go. All burn in 10, 10 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all burn. Light them up. <laughs> that was an okay glow. Yeah, we still, that have, was okay. we still have several balloons to join the show. 
Well, we, we've we've gotten a couple little gusts here in the last yeah. couple of minutes, and yeah. of course, our special shapes a little more susceptible to that. They are, and but and it's so uh, all of a sudden from those gusts, it just dropped about seven degree seven uh, miles an hour. Well, and this. I think some of the pilots are watching uh, the Model T balloon up here. Terry Dillard and Flip Flop Fantasies, they've they've been. Yeah, rock, rocking just a little bit, and I think pilots are seeing that and maybe having some second thoughts or hesitation about getting inflated. But, Maury, you were just saying, what, the wind's dropped to, like, three now? Did you just say yeah, the wind had dropped, dropped to yes, three? Yes, it did. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. It was about seven or eight, and all of a sudden it went to three. Yeah. Well, so, that's good. We like. Yep. We want light winds. It's going to yeah. continue to drop, I think, here as it just kind of bounces around. We keep looking at the uh, anonometer. Anonometer, yes. Yeah. Say that five times fast. There you go. Right here on our rooftop studio. Yeah. So we've got uh, immediate real-time weather. There's one of those stormtroopers. We had a great shot uh, a moment ago. We saw the backside of, of I think, maybe my, my favorite new special shape, the, the uh, sloth, was here. And I just saw that uh, Brenda daly Kalashaw is uh, watching online. She's commenting in our Facebook feed. So, hi, Brenda. Yeah. Hope you're relaxing after your gas flight, maybe watching us in your hotel. Maybe she's headed already gone back to Texas. I don't know. Are you at home, Brenda, or are you still here with us? We'll find out. There's Sarah the Witch and a shot from the uh, other end of the field where we can see the unicorn. We see Albert Einstein in the middle. There's Lady Gesture. And there's the, uh, the uh, orange is the sloth. There's the snowbird, which was uh, another one of um, And there's a golf ball uh, was right back there. There's Fred B. Rabbit there's we were Fred talking B. about Rabbit. before. Yeah, yeah, and obviously they did a good job of watching because. And now that we can see it up close, we can see that it looks can, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it does. It looks really good. But I can also see that it's not quite the same as the original. I just didn't notice that this morning. Keith also sent me before and after pictures or original and rebuild pictures. But, yep. Yeah. Glows, All right. He glows well. There he is. Oh, look at, look that. at that glow. Yeah. Yeah. Up well. How about that? Very good. Let's do another all burn with all of our balloons. Let's do an all burn. Here we go in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all burn. Now we're getting better. Yeah, look at Sandy. And the bees even glow nicely. Somebody on the um, on our Facebook feed asking about who won the gas balloon race as we were talking about Brenda Kalashaw because she and Brian, uh, her co-pilot, were flying in it. Uh, Bert Padelt and help me with names. Uh, Noah, Noah Fordham. Noah Fordham. Uh, they ended up winning uh, the America's Challenge gas balloon race. By this year. 18 miles. 18 miles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah over uh, second place, Peter Cuneo and Barbara Fricky. And then uh, third was uh, Mark, Mark Sullivan, and Sullivan, Sherry White, White. and then uh, Brenda and Brian. Sherry told me fourth. this morning that her fingers are about back to normal. Oh. They were very numb after they, that they being up so cold that first night. Two incredibly cold nights uh, at very high altitude and on oxygen almost the entire time. In fact, that's why uh, Brenda and Brian landed first because uh, they didn't have enough oxygen supply. They were having to go so high to get any speed at all. Uh, they had to be on oxygen constantly, and the they just didn't, flight. didn't have enough oxygen to continue flying. They didn't land because they were out of ballast or anything else. Uh, they simply didn't have enough oxygen to uh, continue at that altitude. And think about that, being you know in single-digit temperatures, on oxygen, in the dark, that's tough on a body. It's tough, yeah. It it's, is. It's just not fun. But uh, good flights, good safe flights by yeah, all of them. Everybody landed safely and got home, and that's the most important thing. Let's try a flicker burn. Okay. How about a flicker burn, please? A flicker burn. By the way, folks, this is a great time to set your cameras to video mode. Video mode or slow-mo mode on your video, because we're going to do a flicker burn in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, flicker. There you see it with the burner from Sunny Boy. Yep, there's the Red Devil. There's Sushi. Or no, that's uh, Gusty Guppy. Uh, there's the uh, there's Rubber Ducky and the uh, Kashari. Uh, there is uh, obviously our pumpkin. There's Spidey Pig. Billy the Kid in the middle. Yep. And that's uh, Fred on the right. Well, and there's either Puddles or Splash through there. I could just peeking see the through, Penguin yep. peeking through. I can't quite see if it has lashes or not. And... Um, a moment ago, I saw a little bit of the backside of Duma, 
Bingo. The, uh, um, yeah. The cheetah. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. Uh, that's here as part of the uh, group from uh, uh, Longleat and Sky Safari. Andrew Holly is watching. Said hello to him a little earlier tonight. He is one of those that is caught by travel restrictions in the UK and can't be here. Striker certainly glows nicely. You would expect that of a white balloon, of course. And uh, and it does light up quite nicely. I saw a there's glimpse our, of there's one. A, our other. I'm sorry, our other unicorn, the pink one. We have a white unicorn and we have a pink one. The pink one is called uh, Alicorn, I believe is the right name. Yes. I saw over the top of a balloon in one of the other shots what appears to be a golf ball, and it's actually on a tee. On a tee, yeah. And they call it par T. Oh. P-A-R-T-E-E. -E. Nice. So I like the name of nice that one. Nice play on words. Jenny Keener. Hi, Jenny. I see that you're watching. I hope your package arrived uh, safely and uh, that you were pleased with it. Jenny will know what I'm referring to. Good deal. And uh, I'm sorry, uh, Stephen, down in the truck, uh, you said that, oh, there is the black sheep. Yay! Hey, Monty's here. We're waiting for Monty to be here. Monty the black sheep, and that is Greg Ashton. So, Greg, glad to know that you got here uh, okay. From Meridian, Idaho is the black sheep. Uh, Kim has an interview with someone on a crown line of one of the shapes, and I'm sorry I didn't hear it. Sunny boy. Time. Sunny boy. So, uh, Kim, take it away. Sunny boy. Yeah. We got somebody who's working really hard here because it's just slightly breezy up here uh, towards the north end of the field. Uh, why don't you tell us what your name is and where you're from? I am Felicia Grogan from Cleveland, North Carolina. And uh, how did you get conned into this? Uh, he's a friend of ours. <laughs> and he asked me if, he, if I could help him. So uh, you, you have your own balloon here, right? Yes. Pato Lantern is our own balloon. And I'm just helping him tonight. Not your, not your first fiesta. How many years have you been coming here? Uh, five years. And what keeps you coming back? We love the crowds. We love to do stuff for children. We've been to two schools and did programs at a couple schools here. And it's mine and my husband's favorite thing to do. Well, we have somebody who's really busy here. Um, anybody that's ever been on a crown line knows. What do you do when you're on the crown line, kind of? I keep tension on this line. And as you can see, I move up and I move back. As the wind moves the balloon, I'm just keeping tension on it. How hard work is it? In a real windy situation, very hard. It's not too terribly bad tonight because it's not too windy. <laughs> I've been on the crown line when it's windy, and it is something like work, yes. yes. Well, we're certainly glad to have you back. Are you glad to be back at Fiesta? Yes, I missed last year. We were going to come last year and then COVID, and so I'm happy to be here this year. Well, it's beginning to get dark out here, and we got a lot of all burns and flicker burns to do, don't we, fellas? We do indeed. Let's do another all burn now. Thank you, Kim. And we'll do an all burn, pilots, in 10, 9, 9 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, all burn! There's See Snowbird that? in the back of that and Mr. Z, or Zebra. And I'm saying that's the view that we tried to get everyone to go out and take advantage of, to be in the middle where you could just spin around 360. And watch it all around and you. And see everybody yeah. light up around you. A little yeah. earlier, I saw uh, Will LaPointe here with Keystone Willie 2, the little yep. cop. Uh, the Bobby, kind of looks like, with the blue uh, police helmet on there and the badge. I don't think the little con made it, but the uh, ah. Keystone did. And once again, our audience has come through for us. Sharon, uh, Simon Polk, by the way, says the name of the white unicorn is Laska the Unicorn. I hope I okay. pronounced that right. L-A-S-K-A, -A, like Alaska without the uh at the front. There you go. So Laska the Unicorn. I should have asked Tom. Tom and I just met. Tom Warren, the pilot and owner, just met on uh, Thursday of last week. He's, as I said, a new member of the board of directors of the BFA. And so... One of my bosses now, and uh, so I have to be nice to him. There's Snoopy right over the top of Sarah the yeah, Wolf isn't and that Rubber Ducky. And Andy Caton's balloon. Andy Caton's balloon. Now, now that the witch is kind of moving out of the way, you see it's a red, white, and blue balloon. Yep. And that's Snoopy flying up there. It's uh, with the Rickenbacker and the, the whole idea of Snoopy and the Red Baron. And somebody saying that the really tall pig is Chris P. Bacon. Someone else said that was Farmer Pig. 
unless I'm thinking of, t unless there are two different pig balloons that I'm not aware uh, of. No, I think that one was farmer pig. I think it is. There's the yeah. golf ball you were talking about. We can see it. You can see the, the white balloon with the, the dimples uh, on it, and it's sitting on a tee if you're up close. Yep. And Sheriff Armadillo, yes. as opposed to Armadillo. Armadillo. Yeah. Armadillo. Yep. I think we can get another Auburn in. Okay. How about an Auburn, please? Pilots in Auburn in 10. Ten. Nine, Nine, eight, eight seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all burn. Now we're looking good. Yeah, now we finally got everybody standing up. Almost everyone with that one down here at the front on the south end. Is and uh, he's going hot. He's going so. hot now, so we'll have him standing up in just a moment. We will. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, Another. and the uh, sun has set far enough that it's now getting dark enough yeah, that we're really so that we seeing really the lights. we really can enjoy what a balloon glow is all about. You know, We start early, but you really don't enjoy the full scope of what a glow is all about until it really gets dark. Yep. Um, so. There's TikTok. Yeah, the is that, uh, uh, clock balloon. Is that Buzzy that we're seeing on the left side? Kind of looks like it. Looks like it. The one that's maybe that's deflating on his side there. Yep. Yeah, the green one. Yep, could yeah. be. There's, and we're uh, starting to see that purple and orange one. Yeah. That's the one we've been watching. We've been we, have, we haven't for, revealed right. it. Right. But uh, There's again, sushi going hot. peeking through the balloon crowd there, down along with Lindy. Uh, we mentioned uh, Barry Ballinger and the Plains Capital Bank balloon. There's um, Itsy Bitsy with that big not so itsy bitsy spider on the side that we can and see you're starting to get a, maybe a little bit of a clue as to what the purple and orange one yes, is we are oh no there's the little balloon that's um didn't you say that was andy baird the other day from cameron balloons that one appears to be ballooniful uh sunrise oh that's not the andy baird balloon i was talking about. oh okay sorry i thought it was andy the, the balloon that andy has is not a special shape it's just all painted on here oh where okay. this one has, has the 3d three balloons, balloons on, it. on it yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah Cork the puppy dog glowing nicely as any white balloon would. Of course, I you know woe be those who have white balloons because you really have to work to keep them clean. Oh, and white. And white. You bet you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So our mystery balloon is uh, getting closer to standing up uh, to join us and has a tie to our upcoming 50th anniversary in the poster collection. It does. Yeah. As we continue to give you a few clues. Nope, we were just about to do that, Mr. Mori. So we're going to do another all burn, but we want more than just the balloon pilots to light up the balloons. We would like all of you out there to, when we get down to the zero, to light up your cell phones. So find the flashlight switch on your phone or just be prepared to turn the screen on. Wait till we get to the end of the countdown. Yep, some of you are jumping the gun. That's okay. I know you're just practicing. That's okay. <laughs> All right, so everybody is going to glow, both the balloons and the cell phones. So here we go, an all bird, all glow in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Everybody light it up. Pretty good. Yeah. A few cell phone lights out yeah, there. There you go. especially from that shot. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, you've still got to come up with a, a catchy name for that, and you haven't done that yet. Maybe we'll have a little online contest. Well, there you go. Yeah. What can we call a cell phone burn, if you will? We'll need a catchy name for a cell phone burn. Yep, we'll do that. Go ahead and uh, post it. Post your thought in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. We'll uh, we'll take those. I think this is. A hey, there's Smokey Bear. Oh yeah, yeah. There's the top of his campaign hat. Those yep. are called uh, campaign hats. They were worn by the military back in. Um, and over on the right, it looks like I think Spidey the Marines. Pig. The Marines were the ones who made campaign hats. Uh, we'll take a quick look at our. Oh, he was, he's gone there. Our special uh, 
shaped balloon there that was the orange and the purple. That's actually Speedbird, which would be the yeah. head of a uh, road runner. Another one of those licensing things. Yeah. Like yellow bird. So and we pretty much had it standing up, and we got to see the eyes and a yeah. little bit of the beak there. But now he's back on the ground. So. So what's the deal with the Model T balloon? What I, I, I missed that earlier because it's certainly not a Model T vehicle. You know, it's not a Ford Model T. Anyway. Well, that's why I was interested to see it, uh, to see what was, what's the, what the, the uh, deal was. What's the association with Model T? Because I associate that with, you know, Ford automobiles. Um, we'll have to find out. We can't find, find out now, of course, unless someone in our audience is, as usually, uh, more knows all about it. More educated than we are and can yeah. tell us. Yep. But, uh, yeah, we'll have to try to research that and find out. So it's been a while since we've done a flicker burn, so why don't we get one of those in the books here? All right, flicker burn. And feel free to join us with your phones if you'd like a flicker burn. Everybody flicker in 10, Ten nine, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one flicker. Meanwhile, the names are flowing in for your cell phone. There's the. Uh... Suggestion of phone glow, cell glow. Screens uh, on, screens light burn. On. Cell burn. Burner um, phone. <laughs> burner phone. <laughs> Yeah, I was just looking uh, at cellulite was another one. <laughs> Hand glow, show glow. So, so yeah, quite a few. Um, keep them coming. We'll keep get somebody will yeah, come up with a great one here that right one is going to stick. Yeah. Hey, the bees are always favorite balloons out here as well. Bob Romaneski is with our reporter Kim Vesley. <laughs> yours, I think, and uh, he's uh, sitting here burning, but maybe we can catch him for a minute. Bob, where are you from? Phoenix, Arizona. And how long have you been doing the bees? Uh, 2004, I think, was the first year that we had the bees here. Every year since. Wow, one of the most popular balloons at Fiesta. Does that create any particular challenges for you as a pilot? Being popular or flying the bees? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you know, uh, the bees have a great personality, so uh, we, we love it that, that people say they're their favorite balloons. Uh, they're also very easy balloons to handle. They're like tonight with the wind, I just got to make sure that, you know, the fabric's out of the burner. But other than that, they handle the wind very well. So they're not real challenging. How many years have you been coming to Fiesta? Well, this would be my 35th year, but it's only my 34th. So my first year was 86. Wow, a real old timer then. Yeah. What keeps you coming back? You know, there's a lot of things. Um, I mean, the love of ballooning, you know, and, and getting this many of your friends together. But uh, we, we have friends uh, that are now family because they, they've been with us for that all that 35 years. So there's a big community spirit here in Albuquerque. It's that, uh, and the culture of ballooning it just kind of mixes that all into a, a, the bundle that, that we call Fiesta. How does it feel to be back? Great. So I had to make sure I got burned at the same time. <laughs> but no, it, it feels great to be back. I mean, last year, just, it, you know, not having Fiesta on, on the calendar, it just wasn't right. It just didn't feel right. Well, some people can walk and chew gum at the same time. He can talk and burn at the same time. So <laughs> not only that, but I'm right-handed. I'm doing it all left-handed. So. <laughs> wow. And we have, have cell phones lighting up the scene. We improvise out here, folks. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, we're glad to have you back, and you're busy, so we'll let you go. Oh, no worries. Thanks so much. I hope everybody's having a good time tonight. Say hi to Art and Glenn. <laughs> hey, Art. Hey, Glenn. Good to see you, buddies. Hey, Bob. Good to see you. The real question to ask Bob is uh, how many tacos is he on now oh <laughs> let's you, just do an all burn let's do yeah, an all burn and move on all burn ladies and gentlemen everybody light it up after 10 9, nine eight seven, seven six, six five four three two, two one all burn That looks good. Had a nice shot from the north end. Got to see all those great balloons up on that end. 
That was, I think, uh, Beagle Maximus. I think I saw a shot from there. Yeah. There's the front of um, Hamlet. I can just see behind the, and the uh, side of Model, Model T. T. Yep, yep. So a reminder, in about 15 minutes, fast tracks will be, oh, look at that shot, wow. with the reflection of the burner in, in the, the truck. In the cool truck, shot. Yeah, that's a cool shot. Well done, our camera crew. As I was saying, in about 15 minutes, fast tracks will be back. Not bringing the flag in at this time. They'll be bringing in pyrotechnics, fireworks. Fireworks in the sky you bet. You bet. to kind of kick off our afterglow fireworks, which will take place mostly from the north end of the field or north of the field, technically. So you're going to want to hang around for that because if you've not seen our Fast Tracks team bring the fireworks in, you are in for a treat tonight. Yep, and they're uh, always decked out in their little neon man suits. I call them their flying Santa suits. Um, they are fun to see as they come in. And if you're anywhere near the video walls, we'll have our helmet cam as well. You'll be able to see what's going on literally from the helmet of one of the skydivers. And speaking of your cell phone lights, um, I assume that we will do as we did earlier this week. If you're down around the, the flagged off landing zone for uh, Team Fast Tracks, we encourage you to uh, line the perimeter of the flagged area. And uh, as the jumpers come down, turn those cell phone lights on and help light the uh, target zone for them, their targeted landing zone tonight. How about a flicker burn? A flicker burn, please. Good time for video. Flicker burn in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Flicker. Wow, look at all the phone lights in that shot. Yeah. There's Beagle Maximus. I thought I saw him before. Yeah, he did. Look at how dark it is when the lights go on. It, it, it just lights up all around it. Yeah, what yeah. A, what a great shot. There's Uncle Sam. There's Uncle Sam, TikTok. Yeah. Who's behind that's it back there? That's Chickaboom back there. Isn't that Chick? Yeah, that's Chickaboom right there. Yeah, it is. Side, it to is. Right of, to the left, our left of Sam, Uncle Sam. Yeah, Chickaboom. Those two balloons, of course, part of the original uh, Sokup Thomas balloon fleet uh, that's now. Are they still operated by the, the Corn Palace folks? Do you know? I don't think so. I okay. think uh, for a long time. The flute, uh, yeah, they, they, I'm not sure where the fleet is housed yeah, these days. Yeah, after Jacques and Kirk got out of ballooning, um, the uh, they had the museum, of course, up at the Corn Palace for a while, and there was a, a club, a group of balloonists up there that operated their special shapes, that whole fleet. But I'm not sure what's up with the fleet nowadays. There's Cynthia Seal yep. um, looking straight into one of the uh, Tatankas one of the bison or buffalo on the side of the Plains Capital Bank balloon. And between them, the, the golf ball. The golf ball yeah. party. Dan Drogi watching tonight. Dan, are you still out in Fiesta or did you go home to Longview? Saw him earlier this week. He was out here. Somebody thinks we should call the phone glow an apple burner. Oh, well, but there's, you know. I know. There's a whole lot of others yeah, out there's, there. There's yep. iOS and then there's Android. So, um, Yep. Yeah. Another vote for phone glow, data been, glow. Been a lot of those. Yep. Somebody said digi glow. I kind of. Oh yeah. Did you glow or did you not? There you, you know? go. <laughs> we need everybody digi glow. Did you eat yet? <laughs> <laughs> How about an all burn and an all digi glow? An all digi phone burn cell glow whatever yet. We're still working on the name. Yeah, still figuring. That all out. burn everybody. Here we go. Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight. eight. Seven, Seven, six, six five, five, four, three, two, one. All, all everybody, light them up. Flash glow, cell glow, cell you burn. The name's just cell keep fire. On yeah. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, quick reminder, those of you along uh, the Main Street doing a little uh, souvenir shopping tonight, if you are enthralled with all the special shapes you're seeing tonight and would like to get 
um, a uh, balloon pen, which is always famous for trading or souvenirs. Maybe uh, you or your little one have a special favorite. The place to be would be at Plano Pen Company. Their booth is down just next to the North Merchandise Tent and usually can be found by a pink neon sign that says Plano Pen Company. They are the exclusive vendor of the official uh, Balloon Fiesta Special Shape pens, and they have 89 different ones made this year. A few of the shapes weren't able to make it at the last minute, so um, you might even be able to pick up a pen of a shape that's not here but might still be your favorite. They are selling out somewhat rapidly. Some were already sold out when we talked with them this morning. So, um, yep, if you're looking for pins, the special shape pins, pins of any kind, but especially right now the special shape pins, you should visit uh, our friends over at Plano Pin Company out on Main Street where you can shop with all of our vendors. What in the world is that? That's some of the other lights. So see that little kid? Well, He's like doing his own little glow here tonight. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, look, it's on a unicorn. Is it? Looks like it's a unicorn. with. Oh, the, yeah. oh it is. Look yeah, at that. yeah, look at that. No. A little helicopter blade sort of thing. That's one of our future special shape pilots. glow pilots. Yeah. <laughs> it's got his little unicorn with the lights on top. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's all kinds of things you'll find along Main Street if you take the time to do some shopping over there. We are lining up our antenna to uh, get the live feed from uh, Team Fast Tracks. When they do jump, you can see them up in the sky by looking above over your head. You can also watch the big video walls where you'll be able to see uh, Balloon Fiesta Live, our broadcast, and uh, we have a camera, they have a camera up in their jump plane, uh, and also one, uh, a helmet cam that jumps with one of the jumpers to bring us some amazing uh, aerial views as they're um, floating back earthward under their uh, parachutes. It was a shot of Beagle Maximus right through, lighting up in, in there. Let's do a, just a cell phone only glow, just as a quick test. A cell phone <laughs> only glow, no balloons. A cellulite just only. Cellulite only. Cells only. Here we go in five, oh, four, four, three, three two, two, one. Cellulite. Cell phones only. Light up those cell phones. That's quite a star field out there that we could see. Yeah. yeah nicely done. The balloons obviously heard a countdown, so they glowed anyway. <laughs> they did. <laughs> I got a cell phone in my pocket. I could burn. Yeah, there you go. All right. Okay, we'll do an all burn to get all the balloons involved. They were just feeling left out. That could I'm sure be. that's it. So an all burn. Oh, Here we go, everybody. And, and, and now somebody's doing, you know, that we had the flames and the flags in the yeah. comments. They're starting now? They're doing flashlights. They're using the flashlight emoji. <laughs> okay. Alexander All right. Graham Glow, there you go. <laughs> Too many syllables. <laughs> Cam Too many camera syllables. One suggested that. Well done, Camera One. Alexander Graham Glow. I like that. All burn in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All burn. Whoa, look at Laska the unicorn. Boy, that thing glows. There's Lindy. That was Peyton's special shape, as we heard a little earlier. And that's Sushi just behind Laska the unicorn. Nice shot. Is that camera five, truck? Steven, Steven, that's can Okay, that's the shot on camera five. All right. There's the Moo Crew balloon lighting up from Creamland. That's awesome. That was a great shot. <laughs> Cynthia Seal is um, clearly in our view now. Thank you. Um, down here on the northeast end of the field as uh, I think it was Barry Ballinger, the Plains Capital Bank balloon that was standing beside it. They have deflated. Oh, there's... Um, What's the one that's got the, the stinger in its tail? The black and white stripe, like Buzzy Bee, is that what that is? I can't recall. There's Wags. Yep, Buzzy Bee. All right, and just, below, just behind him, I just got a quick glimpse of Wags, the special shape of uh, Dean Carlton, the teal balloon that has, uh, I think it's an Irish setter. I'm sure Dean will correct me. 
but the, the little puppy dog on the side of the balloon was actually modeled, two of their family pets modeled for the dog, and there were, I understand, several revisions with the artist until they were happy that uh, WAGs represented uh, their beloved family pets. Number of the balloons are beginning to, as we near the arrival of the Fast Tracks team, another balloon, a number of the balloons, enunciate, he said, uh, are beginning to deflate. So if you're on the launch field still, just be aware there might be fabric falling out of the sky near where you are. So be aware of that so you don't suddenly get blanketed and wonder what happened. <laughs> where, do, where am I? Where did everybody go? Look at the moon. Oh, yeah. Little nice tiny shot. sliver. Yeah, a little sliver. It's gotten smaller and smaller progressively every night that we've been here at Balloon Fiesta. There's the trailer for the Cosmic Crisp Apple. There's Sunny Boy and one of the bees in the Hamlet looking at uh, our screen, our video screen. There is the other, there's Alicorn, the pink unicorn lighting up. Good view of Mr. Z now, the zebra, or as they say in most of the rest of the world, the zebra uh, balloon, which uh, honors our launch directors. We haven't talked much about them this year, but out on the field, um, you'll see a number of people in black and white referee suits and or variations thereof. Those are our launch directors, and uh, it's their job when we fly to get all the balloons safely into the sky. During the night, they're just extra safety officers for our glows. But uh, Mr. Z, the zebra, uh, representing all of our um, launch directors. One of my favorite memories is uh, some years ago, I was having uh, uh, an issue with one of my eyes, and I was out here as the announcer with a pirate patch over my eye because I had terrible double vision. And uh, I talked about the zebras and how they like to stripe everything, and all of a sudden, uh, even though I was on the super secret announce tower then, they uh, found I, you. They found me. I turned around, and there was a whole group of zebras behind me, a whole herd, and uh, and they striped my eye patch. Um, so well, after 32 years out here, you do come up with a few favorite memories. That's one of mine, of our zebras. Let's good, get an all bird in job. before Fast Tracks drops in. All right. We'll How do about an one. all bird? Here we go in 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three, two, one, all burn. So pilots, uh, we are nearing the arrival of the Team Fast Tracks, and we see that a number of you are deflating. We've been asked to uh, please direct you, please queue up on the far west road to get to propane tonight. So as you uh, pack your balloons up and exit the field, please use the far west road in order to queue for propane refueling tonight. And Kim, I think, has found another Special Shapes pilot. Nope, nope. Okay, we're going to wait on that. Sorry, didn't hear the conversation. We ah. actually have a video from inside the plane. There is the live cam inside the aircraft for Team Fast Tracks. So we have uh, Dimitri. Uh, we're going to try and bring some of his audio in. He's got the helmet cam. Take a look at the packs on the legs of those guys, the rest of our jumpers. That's the uh, pyrotechnics, the fireworks that you're going to see. Yeah, you really can't see it very well there. When they come in for landing, you usually you really get a see really it. good yeah. shot of them. Um, and, but you can see the uh, the white lights on that one. There's blue lights on the one closer to the door. Yeah, one of them is red. That's why I call it the Santa suit. There you go, that one up there. And I think the other one is green, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up. We see your thumbs up, Dimitri. Yep. Camera, the uh, helmet cam is ready to go. Yep. Our helmet cam brought to us by Selection.com. Appreciate them joining us and uh, helping us bring this helmet cam video to you. 
for both our 5 o'clock jumps where they bring in the flag right. and for our 7.30 jumps where they're about to do a pyrotechnics There's the uh, pilot course. in yep. the left seat flying the aircraft. Making the uh, left turn around the yep. field. Doing a left bank up there. Got the whole inside of the plane. Now he's in the door. Yep, Our jumper first number jumper. one, ready to go. And we'll be see, able to see them exit the plane. You can kind of see the packs down there on yeah, their legs yeah, now. Yeah, oh, look at that the one. Bag, the, the, those leg bags or packs that they wear, that, that is what contains all the fireworks, the pyrotechnics. I'm not sure I'd want fireworks going off that close to my legs. And, of course, all the controls for those are there on their wrists. Exactly. So yeah. not only are they flying their parachute down, paying attention to where they're going, they're having to remember they're to turn off or turn on the fireworks yep. and fire those off. They're also talking to each yeah, other. Jumper one they're, is away. Oh, there goes yep. number two. Number three. number three. And here comes, here comes the, the helmet, helmet cam. cam. Looking right We're out down the there door. somewhere, and he's, and he's away. away. Indeed. There goes the aircraft yep. off into the uh, ether. And there's the chute deploying. Jumpers are away, indeed. So they are over the south end of the field, up high, directly over the rooftop studio. You see the different color neon lights up there. And as they get a little lower, we'll be able to see the chutes. But if you're able to see the video wall or you're watching on the feed, you get to see what they see as they come in. We're going to call for an all cell phone opportunity here to see if we can't light the field up for them. So get your cell phones ready. Got to get a great view of the city and all the lights of the city. At some point, we usually are able to see the uh, balloon field as well from up in the air. There go the fireworks. So you can see the fireworks from the ground and from the air. Yeah, it'd be one thing to have the uh, fireworks on your leg and then the other guy has to fly back around behind you. <laughs> That's why they're talking to each other. And Dimitri's staying back just a little bit so he can give us that great shot. There, there it is from our cameras on the formation. ground. Yeah, that's from the ground cameras. With the little uh, bit of uh, comets fireworks. in the sky. And there's just the red dot with Dimitri following them. Yeah, that's the camera, the uh, helmet camera jumper that's following them. Again, pilots, we're being, you're being asked to use the far west road to queue for propane this evening as you exit uh, the launch field once you've packed. And while you're watching, the rest of you are watching up at our fast track skydiving team bringing their pyrotechnics in. Be sure you're also watching where you're walking. So try not to walk and watch at the same time. Stand still, <laughs> look up, enjoy the fireworks show. When you're walking, look down, look where you're walking so you don't get caught up in any of the ropes between the balloons and the trucks or the fabric yeah. or even our trucks moving. Because remember, they all have to get propane so they can be here in the morning That's for right. our Special Shapes Rodeo. And if you want to see the Special Shapes fly, the time to be back would be with us in the morning because a number of the, the uh, shapes will take flight tomorrow as part of our rodeo. Nice long comet burn up there the, tonight.
the daytime, we, this could almost be a barber pole. And now from the Comet Trail, we're starting to see the rest of the pyrotechnics. And remember, after the end of this jump, it will be our afterglow fireworks. I hear the jump plane uh, following along as well. Yep, and you can still see, uh, is it Dimitri on the helmet cam up yes. there? Yes. Yeah, if you look up, you can see, uh, well, I guess they all have a, a little red position light. Uh, but but even Dimitri's there, sending out fireworks now yeah, as well. Yeah, he is. I was going to say for a minute there, it was just the front three that were sending out the pyrotechnics, and you can see the little red light on Dimitri, but now they're all um, releasing those fireworks from up in the sky. Excuse me, up in the sky. All right, cell phones. Let's do cell phones. Here we go. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Cell, cell phones. phones. Light, Light up the up. field. Point it up high. There you go. You can yeah. see them there in the uh, helmet cam looking down. Yeah, look yeah. at them all lighting up there. Now you get a look at the uh, what I call the flying Santa suits. There's the blue leader. And the red one is the third back. Looks like Dimitri might be red tonight as well. They could dial in the color they want, I, think I they understand. they can, yeah, I think they can change colors. The LED cool. light suits, and they dial in the colors. There's a good look at the uh, blue one. Our lead jumper coming in now, setting up for his landing approach. And you'll notice that these guys come in because of those uh, leg packs they wear, they come in and slide. They don't do a walking stand. Just landing. like there that. He's safe. He's safe. Yeah. Got a couple of uh, red ones tonight coming in. There comes, comes the one next now. one. Yeah. Oh, he's got, he's got, he's got right. two colors, red and purple. Yeah. Like boy, this evening. Yeah, he's, uh, two Multicolor. Two tone. Here comes the helmet cam in for a landing. There's the bees lighting up. Here's the, yeah, the helmet cam. And all right. All, right. Nicely done. all four on the ground. Team Fast Track with our helmet cam brought to us by Selection.com. Let's hear it for Team Let's Fast Track. Team Fast Track. If you enjoyed the show, let them know it, folks. Great jump by Team Fast, Fast Tracks. Tracks. Absolutely. Those guys do a great shows. Thank you, Team Fast Track. Excellent shows tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. What we won't do for entertainment, right? There it is. Selection.com and our helmet cam. We're still seeing the helmet cam. You get a good shot of the lights, and they start unpacking all those. Pyrotechnics, yeah. all those packs the, that have I can been imagine they want to get those leg bags off. And, and then, then look uh, right over there, uh, having a yeah. conversation with the having folks. Having a chat with a few of the uh, folks that have come out to yeah. see them tonight. And they, uh, they're all great guys. It's a great team to work with. And they'll be happy to uh, yep, take pictures, have answer your questions, all that great stuff down there in the landing zone. You bet. And we appreciate your joining us with your uh, cell phones tonight. We had some fun with that. We did, but don't run away yet because we've got our Afterglow fireworks coming up in just a few minutes. And you'll be able to see that from anywhere on the park. 
as our trucks do continue to pack up their balloons tonight. Thank them for being out here tonight. They have to go propane, so they're going to get in line as, as opposed to sit on the field probably and watch the fireworks. So they're going to be moving their trucks when, and trailers once they get everything packed up. Do watch out for those vehicles moving across the field. So almost the conclusion of yet another very successful day here at Balloon Fiesta. Yep, our first uh, Shapes Rodeo Glodio Day. We had the rodeo this morning. We've done the Glodio tonight. And we're scheduled to do it all again tomorrow. Again tomorrow morning. So the opportunity, if you have not yet seen the Shapes take flight, not all of them will, but many will launch and fly off the field again tomorrow morning. And then, of course, we still have competition tomorrow morning. One more day. We'll put some poles up again tomorrow, most likely, give pilots an opportunity to throw that ring uh, over the pole. We had three do that three this did morning. did that today, winning. Um, well, one pilot is the sole pilot on the pole, so he gets the full 2000 Right. The two that got on the same pole will split, so they'll each get $1,000. And we'll uh, have money on those poles again tomorrow, so more opportunity. And then, of course, we throw, put up another target out there as well. Today, what we call a multiple judge declared goal. So there were two X's out there. You could pick whichever one you right. wanted to to throw on. You could only throw on one. If you throw on both, then there's a penalty for throwing too many markers. It would have been really difficult to throw two markers on to really get any kind of score that way today anyway because yeah, the X's are pretty far apart. Neither score would have been very good. Right. And so, yeah. Uh, plus, if you threw twice, you'd be disqualified anyway. Neither Some one sort of score, penalty, so, yeah. yeah. There, was a, there was a balloon on Tuesday that you may remember. They came in and they dropped on the X, which was the center of a series of triangles. Right. And they got so close to the X, they got so excited, they never... They, they forgot about throwing on the, the triangles. triangles. Yeah. And we're yelling at them, throw the orange, throw the orange, because it was an orange marker they were supposed to. So they finally did, and they grabbed two of them and threw them out. And I noticed they got uh, a penalty for yeah. <laughs> multiple markers. Yeah, the Gord and that's called a Gordon Bennett, where you have a target X, but then there is a, a separate scoring area. And, yep. and as balloonists, we're so used to, especially if, if, you, if you're not a real veteran competitor, you're so used to throwing at the X right. that even when it's just one task, it's a Gordon Bennett, there's, there is an X, and we measure from, from the, center the center of the X, but there might be a, a separate distinct scoring area. In this case, there were four triangles, and pilots will forget, and, and they'll... You know, I threw on the X. Yeah, no. They'll throw yeah. right at the center of the X. They'll go, oh, I won, I won, I won. Well, no, you didn't, no. because you didn't get it in the scoring area. Although uh, yesterday it was, or Tuesday well, it, was, it was. Yeah, it was two tasks. Because it was I'm two tasks. about just a pure Gordon Bennett task. Right. They do, well, we just mix them up and get them all yeah, confused but, together but there. But the point was, pilots get confused in a Gordon Bennett sometimes and throw at the X when the X is not the target. Right. But we do that because 99% of the time, it is the the tar the X is the target, and it is what you should be throwing your marker at. But the Gordon Bennett is different, and sometimes you get confused. You do. Yeah. They do. They do. I don't. We don't. I. <laughs> we've got. So it, we will we've have got it straight all the time. We're never wrong. So we'll have the poles, <laughs> which is its own competition, right. and we'll have some sort of target. Some sort of target to that throw will probably uh, an X. We'll. <laughs> X's or something. We'll see what happens tomorrow to be able to do yeah. something with that. And we, they make those decisions right before pilot briefing at 6 o'clock in the morning. So they'll tell the pilots. That's when we'll find out. Right. We'll explain it to you. We'll be out there with our camera for all of that competition. It's the final day of competition tomorrow right. because we award the overall and the top number of pro places at the awards brunch on Saturday on morning Saturday right morning. after flying. Right. Yes, we do. And so we will record that and then uh, show it. We'll post it for folks to be able to see. Post it for people to view online, for those of you that are watching Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by Exxon Mobil. And remember that this is year number five of Balloon Fiesta Live, and it you can is. go back and watch all of our shows. They are all archived. And uh, all of our shows, once the show is done live, it takes Facebook and YouTube a few minutes to kind of turn it into a video versus a live stream. But then it's there, and as soon as I can get to the website, I actually link it from balloonfiesta.com. Click on the Balloon Fiesta Live link, or just go to balloonfiesta.com slash live dash stream. And you can see all of our videos. They are all linked there. And, uh, you know, it's been great to have as many live viewers and interaction with our chat rooms 
But what I've noticed this year is we have a whole lot of people who are time shifting this and watching it right after we are done live uh -huh. because we're done and we have a certain number of views, obviously, at that point. Right. And then when I go back and look at the, the number of people that have watched it four or five hours later, the number jumps up tremendously. Well, so it's because are, our audience online is worldwide, and right. given time zone differences, these shows, our glows, are on in the, the middle of the wee hours of the morning over right. the UK and parts yeah, of Europe. midnight, and 1, 2 o'clock. You can't expect people necessarily to stay up at 2 a.m. to watch a live show. They'll get up and have breakfast about 8 o'clock, which will be maybe, you know, midnight, 2 in the morning here, and they'll watch it at a normal hour for them uh, for their daily uh, life. And even the folks on the West Coast here for our morning shows, now we start at 5 o'clock. Or if you were in Hawaii, it's probably back to the middle of the yeah, night again. Yeah, 3 a.m. And yeah. so they just wait and watch it later. The That's best place to watch the morning show is over in the U.K. because it's you know, the middle noon, of the afternoon. One hour, 1 o'clock in the afternoon over yeah. there. It's, you know, have a cup of tea and watch a balloon live show. So it's uh, really great to bring the show to you live, and we're happy to make sure that you are able to see it whenever you may like as well. So I heard the first volley out there, so we're about to get started on our fireworks, our afterglow fireworks, some of the best fireworks show you'll ever see. You bet. We will stop talking and uh, move on and let you watch the fireworks. We'll leave it up on the stream. And then our game plan is to be back at 6 a.m. Mountain Time. Right. Speaking of all those time zones, yep. 6 a.m. Mountain Time in the morning for another episode of the exciting Balloon, Balloon Fiesta, Fiesta Live, Live, powered, powered by, by Exxon Mobile. Mobile. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Can you tell we've been here too long already? We're getting to the end. Of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know when the when your watch starts telling you you've been standing for 21 hours. Yeah, it's uh, and and when we get a little chippy up here, it's uh, you know you know we're nearing the end of another fiesta, but we still have several more events or sessions as we like to call them, to go. So well, let's see, two, four, five more to go. Five more to go tomorrow morning. Another shapes rodeo, another glodio tomorrow night. Saturday morning we go back to mass ascension. Saturday night's Night Magic Glow, the final balloon glow of the year, and then our farewell Mass Ascension on Sunday morning. So there you go, the thanks, fireworks. Thanks for being with us tonight. Have a great evening watching the fireworks, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm Art Lloyd, Jr. I'm Glenn Moyer. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.
been watching Balloon Fiesta Live, powered by ExxonMobil. Always in October and always in Albuquerque. The Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta is the world's premier ballooning event. Make plans now to join us in person in 2022 for the Big 5-0, the 50th Albuquerque International Balloon Fiesta. Thanks for watching Balloon Fiesta Live. This program is a production of AIBF Inc.